Here are 30 most commonly asked scenario-based Kubernetes-related interview questions, with detailed answers in DevOps AWS interviews. 1. Scenario. Your organization is adopting Kubernetes on AWS X for container orchestration. How would you design the Kubernetes cluster architecture to ensure high availability and fault tolerance? Answer. I will design a multi-as-availability zone X cluster to ensure high availability and fault tolerance. This involves spreading worker nodes across multiple losses, using multiple subnets, and leveraging X features like managed node groups. AWS auto-scaling groups can be utilized to automatically adjust the number of nodes based on demand. 2. Scenario, your team is managing microservices on X, and you want to implement Canary deployments for one of the services. How would you set up a Kubernetes deployment strategy to gradually release the new version and monitor its performance before a full rollout? Answer, I will create a separate Kubernetes deployment or service for the Canary release. This involves deploying a small percentage of pods with the new version, monitoring metrics using tools like Prometheus or Grafana, and gradually increasing the deployment percentage based on successful testing and performance metrics before a full rollout. 3. Scenario. Your organization follows GitOps practices for Kubernetes configuration management. How would you integrate AWS, Codepipeline, and Argot to automate the deployment and synchronization of Kubernetes configurations? Answer, I will configure a Git repository to store Kubernetes manifests, integrate it with AWS Codepipeline, and use Argot to synchronize the cluster state with the Git repository. AWS Codepipeline would trigger on changes to the Git repository, and Argot would apply the changes to the Kubernetes cluster, ensuring a declarative and automated approach to configuration management. 4. Scenario your Kubernetes cluster is experiencing high traffic, and you want to optimize the performance of the applications. How would you use horizontal pod autoscaling HPA to dynamically adjust the number of pods based on resource utilization metrics? Ants are old configure HPA manifests for the relevant deployments. Specifying resource utilization metrics like CPU and memory thresholds. This ensures that Kubernetes automatically scales the number of pods up or down based on demand. The Kubect autoscale command or YAML definitions can be used to set up HPA. 5. Scenario, your team is using Helm charts to manage application deployments on Kubernetes. How would you structure Helm charts and values files to support multi-environment deployments with varying configurations? Answer. I will organize Helm charts to separate common components and configurations from environment-specific settings. Values files for each environment would include specific configurations, allowing for easy customization. Helm release management and namespace could be used to maintain isolation between environments and avoid conflicts. 6. Scenario. Your organization is deploying stateful applications on Kubernetes and you want to implement dynamic storage provisioning using AWS EBS volumes. How would you set up storage classes and persistent volusim PVCs to automate the creation of EBS volumes for stateful workloads? Answer. I will define a storage checklist specifying AWS EBS as the provisioner and use this storage checklist in persistent volusim. Kubernetes will dynamically provision EBS volumes based on the PVC requests. The PVCs can then be attached to pods, ensuring dynamic and scalable storage provisioning for stateful applications. 7. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is running multiple namespace, and you want to implement network policies to control communication between pods. How would you define and enforce network policies using AWS, X, and Calico? Answer, I will install Calico as the network plugin for X and define Kubernetes network policies to control traffic between pods. By using labels and selectors, policies can be applied to specific namespace or pods. 
ensuring that communication is restricted based on defined rules, enhancing security and segmentation. 8. Scenario. Your organization is adopting a microservices architecture on Kubernetes, and you want to implement service discovery and load balancing. How would you configure and utilize Kubernetes services to achieve this? Answer. I will create Kubernetes services for each microservice, allowing for service discovery and load balancing. The service can be exposed internally or externally based on requirements. Configuring selectors and labels ensures that pods are discovered dynamically, and the service acts as a stable endpoint for client applications to communicate with. 9. Scenario, your team is managing a Kubernetes cluster with multiple node pools on X. How would you dynamically scale node pools based on workload demands and optimize costs? Answer, I will use the X Manage Node Groups feature to create multiple node pools with varying instance types and capacities. Auto scaling groups can be configured to adjust the desired number of nodes based on metrics like CPU or custom metrics. This ensures dynamic scaling and optimal resource allocation based on workload demands. 10. Scenario, your Kubernetes applications rely on secrets for sensitive information like API keys or database passwords. How would you securely manage and distribute these secrets using Kubernetes secrets and AWS key management service KMs? Answer. I will create Kubernetes secrets to store sensitive information and encrypt them using KMs. The AWS EM roles associated with the worker nodes or pods would be granted the necessary permissions to access KMs. This ensures secure storage and distribution of secrets within the Kubernetes cluster. 11. Scenario, your team is managing a Kubernetes cluster and you want to implement pod-level security using PodSecurePolicize PSP. How would you define and enforce PodSecurePolicize to control the security context of pods? Answer, I will create PodSecurePolicize specifying the security contexts, such as allowed volumes, capabilities, and privileged access. These policies would be associated with specific service accounts or namespace. Pods and deployments would then reference these policies to enforce security restrictions at the pod level, enhancing overall cluster security. 12. Scenario. Your organization is running a CI or CD pipeline for Kubernetes deployments, and you want to automate the promotion of applications from staging to production. How would you configure the pipeline to promote containerized applications across environments while ensuring consistency? Answer, I will configure the CI or CD pipeline to use Kubernetes manifests for different environment staging production. Deployments would be orchestrated using tools like Helm or Kubect. CI or CD tools would be set up to promote containers and configurations. From staging to production, ensuring a consistent and automated promotion process. 13. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is experiencing issues, and you want to troubleshoot performance problems. How would you use tools like Kubect, KubeState Metrics, and Prometheus to identify and resolve performance bottlenecks within the cluster? Answer, I will use Kubect to gather information about pod and node statuses. KubeState Metrics would provide additional insights into the state of the cluster. Prometheus could be configured to scrape metrics from Kubernetes components. Analyzing these metrics and using visualization tools like Grafana would help. Identify and resolve performance bottlenecks within the cluster. 14. Scenario, your team is managing a Kubernetes cluster, and you want to implement a backup and restore strategy for Etsed, the cluster's key value store. How would you use tools like Valero to perform regular backups and ensure data recovery in case of failures? Answer, I will deploy Valero to the Kubernetes cluster and configure it to perform regular backups of Etsed data. The backups would be stored in a secure location, possibly an AWS S3 bucket. In case of failures, 
Valero can be used to restore the cluster state from the backup, ensuring data recovery and minimizing downtime. 15. Scenario Your organization is running a multi tenant Kubernetes cluster, and you want to implement resource quotas to ensure fair resource allocation among different teams or namespace. How would you define and enforce resource quotas in Kubernetes? Answer. I will define resource quotas for each namespace, specifying limits for resources like CPU, memory, and persistent volumes. This ensures that each namespace or team gets a fair share of resources and prevents one tenant from monopolizing resources. Alerts and monitoring can be set up to notify administrators when resource quotas are nearing their limits. 16. Scenario your Kubernetes applications generate a significant amount of logging data, and you want to centralize and manage logs efficiently. How would you configure applications and the Kubernetes cluster to forward logs to a centralized logging solution like Amazon CloudWatch logs? Answer, I will configure applications to write logs to Stute and Stetter. Fluent or Fluent Bit can be deployed as log agents on each node to collect container logs. These logs can then be forwarded to a centralized logging solution like CloudWatch Logs. Configuring log, group, and stream names based on metadata allows for effective log grouping and analysis. 17. Scenario Your team is managing a Kubernetes cluster with applications that require external access. How would you implement ingress controllers and configure ingress resources? to enable external access to services, ensuring proper routing and SSL termination. Answer, I will deploy an ingress controller like Nginx or Trefic in the cluster. Ingress resources would be defined to specify routing rules and backend services. Annotations can be used to configure SSL termination and other options. This approach allows for efficient external access to services while ensuring proper routing and security. 18. Scenario Your organization is deploying applications on Kubernetes, and you want to implement CI or CD pipelines for automated testing and deployments. How would you set up Jenkins or GitLab CI to interact with the Kubernetes cluster, execute tests, and deploy applications based on code changes? Ants are will configure Jenkins or GitLab CI to use Kubernetes agents for job execution. CI or CD pipelines would include stages for testing, building container images, and deploying applications to the Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes contexts and service account credentials would be used to ensure secure and controlled interactions between the CI or CD system and the cluster. 19. Scenario. Your Kubernetes applications rely on config maps to store configuration data. How would you dynamically update config maps, and how would you ensure that pods automatically reflect the changes without requiring restarts? Answer. I will update config maps using Kubect Apply, or by directly modifying the config map resource. Pods using config maps would automatically reflect the changes without restarts, as Kubernetes volume mounts automatically update. The configmapruf field in pod specifications ensures that changes are dynamically applied without manual intervention. 20. Scenario. Your Kubernetes applications need to interact with other AWS services, and you want to ensure secure and seamless integration. How would you set up EM roles for service accounts URSA in X, allowing pods to assume roles with the necessary permissions? Answer, I will create EM roles and associate them with Kubernetes service accounts. This involves creating an OIDIC provider for the X cluster, creating an EM OIDIC identity provider, and annotating the service accounts with the necessary EM role information. Pods can then assume these roles securely, ensuring seamless integration with other AWS services. 21. Scenario, your team is managing stateful applications on Kubernetes, and you want to implement rolling updates for stateful sets. How would you configure stateful set updates to ensure minimal disruption to applications and maintain data integrity during the update process? 
Answer will configure the stateful set update strategy to use a rolling update approach. This ensures that pods are updated one at a time, allowing for seamless transitions and minimal disruption. Prioritizing pod updates based on readiness and lifecycle hooks can be employed to maintain data integrity during the update process. 22. Scenario Your Kubernetes applications require secure communication between pods. How would you implement network policies to control pod to pod communication and enforce security rules within the cluster using Calico or another network policy provider? Answer, I will define Kubernetes network policies to control pod to pod communication within the cluster. Rules would be specified to allow or deny traffic based on labels, namespace, and specific ports. This ensures that security policies are enforced and communication between pods is restricted according to the defined rules. 23. Scenario, your organization is running a hybrid cloud environment. With Kubernetes clusters on both AWS and on-premises infrastructure, how would you implement a unified management approach using tools like Rancher or Anthos to manage and orchestrate applications across these clusters? Answer. I will deploy management platforms like Rancher or Anthos to provide a unified view and control plane for managing Kubernetes clusters across different environments. These tools would be configured to interact with clusters on AWS and on-premises infrastructure, allowing for centralized management, monitoring, and orchestration of applications. 24. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is running multiple applications with diverse resource requirements. How would you use horizontal pod autoscaling HPA and vertical pod autoscaling VPA? to dynamically adjust the resources allocated to pods based on their usage patterns. Answer, I will configure horizontal pod autoscaling HPA to adjust the number of pods based on metrics like CPU or memory usage. Additionally, vertical pod autoscaling VPA can be implemented to adjust the resource limits and requests for individual pods dynamically, ensuring optimal resource utilization for each application. 25. Scenario, your team is managing a Kubernetes cluster with multiple node pools on Jeek. How would you optimize costs by using preemptible VMs for certain node pools, while ensuring the reliability of critical workloads with regular VMs in other pools? Ants are able to configure node pools on Jeek, designating preemptible VMs for non-critical workloads and regular VMs. For critical workloads, auto-scaling policies can be adjusted to use preemptible instances when available, optimizing costs. Critical workloads would run on more reliable regular VMs, ensuring high availability and stability. 26. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is running applications that require external access through a load balancer. How would you configure ingress resources with SSL termination? and set up AWS Network Load Balancer NLB or Application Load Balancer ALB to route traffic securely to the services? Answer. I will define ingress resources to specify routing rules and backend services for external access. Annotations can be used to configure SSL termination. For AWS, NLB or ALB would be set up as the external load balancer ensuring secure and efficient routing of traffic to the services within the cluster. 27. Scenario. Your organization is adopting GitOps practices, and Kubernetes configurations are stored in a Git repository. How would you set up a CI or CD pipeline using Arguct or Flux to automate the continuous deployment of Kubernetes configurations based on changes in the Git repository? Answer I will configure a CI or CD pipeline using Arguct or Flux to pull Kubernetes configurations from a Git repository. The pipeline would include stages for testing, validation, and deployment. Changes in the Git repository trigger the pipeline ensuring that Kubernetes configurations are automatically deployed to the cluster in a controlled and GitOps-driven manner. 28. 
Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is experiencing a surge in traffic, and you want to ensure scalability by optimizing pod scheduling. How would you configure resource requests and limits, as well as node affinity and anti-affinity rules? To enhance the scheduling efficiency of pods within the cluster? Answer. I will configure resource requests and limits for pods to ensure proper scheduling and efficient resource utilization. Node affinity and anti-affinity rules can be set up to guide the scheduler in placing pods on specific nodes based on node characteristics or the presence of other pods. This enhances scheduling efficiency and scalability. 29. Scenario. Your team is managing a Kubernetes cluster, and you want to implement pod security policies using Open Policy Agent OPA Gatekeeper. How would you define and enforce custom policies to ensure that pods adhere to specific security and compliance standards? Answer, I will deploy OPA Gatekeeper and define custom policies using Rego language. These policies would specify security and compliance standards, covering aspects like container image security, pod privileges, and resource limits. Gatekeeper would then enforce these policies during pod admission, ensuring that only compliant pods are deployed. 30. Scenario your Kubernetes applications depend on external services, and you want to implement service mesh to enhance communication, monitoring, and security. How would you deploy and configure Istio to manage traffic between services and enforce policies like rate limiting and circuit breaking? Answer, I will deploy Istio and configure it to create a service mesh within the Kubernetes cluster. Virtual services and destination rules would be defined to manage traffic routing, force rate limiting, and configure circuit breaking for communication between services. Istio's observability features would also be utilized for monitoring and tracing. In conclusion, these scenario-based questions cover various aspects of managing Kubernetes clusters on AWS and address real-world challenges in a DevOps context. These questions assess the candidate's knowledge of best practices, tools, and strategies for deploying, managing, and optimizing Kubernetes environments. Kubernetes is a dynamic and evolving technology, so stay updated with the latest developments. For more exciting tips, tricks, and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Ask interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.